This is your WISS Daily News Roundup for Oshkosh Air Support, 98.3 FM and 1100 AM. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Health officials are confirming a case of the measles in Wisconsin. The person lives in Dane County and works in Rock County. The Department of Health Services says the measles has been rare in Wisconsin due to high vaccination rates, but measles is highly contagious and can cause serious health problems for people who are not vaccinated. Health officials are reassuring people that pasteurized milk from Wisconsin is safe to drink. Dairy cows in other states have come down with the bird flu in recent weeks, but so far there are no reports of bird flu in Wisconsin. In the meantime, dairy farmers are urged to be on the lookout and let health officials know if they have any sick animals. The most conservative U.S. House Republicans may try to remove Speaker Mike Johnson from his post this week. Wisconsin's Brian Stile is against the idea. It would be a distraction. What we need to be focused on is the issues of the day. Uh, I'd be disappointing if my, any of my colleagues bring that forward, and hopefully uh, we can keep Speaker Johnson in his job. Stiles speaking with WISN-TV's Upfront. The Republicans' right wing is unhappy with Johnson over the foreign aid package that passed last week. The Republican National Committee wants protesters farther away from the party's national convention in Milwaukee. A lawyer for the committee tells the Secret Service that Paramarquette Park would be problematic. City leaders won't confirm that's where the designated protest area will be. Protest organizers want to be closer to the convention's perimeter. State School Superintendent Jill Underly says her agency can't implement Wisconsin's new literacy programs until lawmakers approve funding for them. Republican legislators are claiming in court the state can't spend $50 million for new reading initiatives because of a partial veto by Governor Evers. Emergency room doctors say they're worried about their ability to care for pregnant patients who need abortions out of medical necessity. Dr. Polly Wiltz is an emergency medicine resident. We are putting ourselves at risk for allowing people who do not have medical training to pick and choose which procedures can and cannot be applied in the emergency department. The U.S. Supreme Court will decide whether patients have access to emergency room abortions in states that have banned abortions. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WISS News, I'm Lisa Hale. If you want to be a part of the biggest fly-in in the world, now's the time to apply for one of the 750 seasonal or temporary jobs available at the EAA, says Matt Funk, their Human Resources Director. Do this sooner than later. Um, uh, amazingly enough, when even when you look at the fact that we're talking 450 security guards, we do fill the positions. So I I would absolutely encourage people that are interested, get ahead of the game, do it sooner than later, um, because we, we do fill up. Visit the EAA career page and fill out an application or attend one of the many hiring events that will be going on at the EAA Aviation Museum in May and June. Road work in Outagamie County will result in the closures of the interstate this week. The northbound lanes of I-41 between Wisconsin Avenue and Richmond Street will close Tuesday night from 11 until 4.30 in the morning. From April 30th till May 3rd, the southbound lanes of I-41 between the Wisconsin 47 interchange and Wisconsin 96 will also be closed from 11 p.m. to 4.30 each night. Visit 511wi.gov for more information on road work and closures in your area. A 58-year-old Toma man faces his 12th OWI following a traffic stop Saturday evening. The Wisconsin State Patrol stopped John Miner on I-41 at Highway 55 at about 7.30 Saturday night. He was taken to the hospital for blood tests and is booked into the Outagamie County Jail for operating a motor vehicle under the influence 12th offense. Wisconsin is aging, and Sky Van Rossum with the Greater Wisconsin Agency of Aging and Resources says the elderly should be aware of their county aging and disability resource centers. It's very, very community oriented. There's card playing that goes on. There's folks that just visit over a cup of coffee. They have a tech program. So if an individual is struggling with the, you know, their computer, or struggling with their iPad, whatever it might be, they can go in and get advice. Each ADRC has its own website. GWAAR.org is also a great resource for elders and caregivers. 
Dairy farmers are on high alert as the spread of bird flu raises local concerns. This highly pathogenic avian influenza is spreading through livestock. Effective today, dairy cattle must be tested for bird flu when traveling between states. The animal industry as a whole is on heightened alert. Recently, 33 cow herds were infected across eight different states. So far, there are no reports of infected cows in Wisconsin. And that's what you need to know. I'm Lisa Hale, WISS News. It's the Brewers and the Rays tonight. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers host the Rays at AmFam Field. Milwaukee coming off a 15-5 loss yesterday to New York. The Yankees six foot seven Aaron Judge sliding into second, using his big hand to block shortstop Willie Adamas' throw to first, but not called for interference. Pat Murphy. In the judgment of the umpire, in the judgment of the umpire, there was not interference intentionally. I think after they watch it on on, on, on video, if you guys watched it, replayed it, it's hard to say that he wasn't making an attempt at least purposely um, obstruct. I don't think he wanted to get hit by the ball, but I think he was trying to purposely NBA, no Dame, no Giannis, and then no Bobby Portis after he was ejected. The Bucks losing last night in Indy, 126-113, to 113, now down three games to one to the Pacers. This is a great group to coach, I'm telling you. Um, I know we have a lot of stuff going on, you know, just clutter, injuries, um, but man, I'm, I'm loving this team every second that I'm with them. Uh, and, and today is another example of that. Game 5 tomorrow night at Pfizer Forum. The Packers adding 11 new players in the NFL draft. It's a long process that starts, you know, uh, in the middle of the summer for our guys. And to get to the kind of the, the end of it and, and feel really good about helping your football team is a really good feeling. And um, so I'm very, very appreciative of everyone's efforts. And uh, again, I think we had, a, we had a really good opportunity in front of us as we, as we started on Thursday. And uh, sitting here right now, I feel like... Uh, we did a lot of good things for our football team, so we're excited about that. That's Packers GM Brian Gutekunst with sports. I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Disgraced movie producer Harvey Weinstein's 2020 convictions for sexual assault and rape have been overturned in New York State. The New York Times reports that Weinstein's lawyer claims that he did not receive a fair trial. The Miramax founder was sentenced to 23 years in prison after being convicted in February of 2020. Weinstein, however, is not going anywhere since he was also convicted for sex crimes in California and will remain in prison. An Oregon woman is $1 million richer after remembering she stashed a lottery ticket in a Tupperware container. People.com reports that 52-year-old Leslie Carr said she wouldn't have remembered at all if she hadn't heard an announcement about a billion-dollar Powerball winner on TV, saying, I would have totally forgot since we never check our tickets. <laughs> you have a small enough chance to win the lottery as it is, but even less of a chance if you don't check your tickets, folks. Carr says she and her husband will pay off their house and buy tickets to Hawaii. I hope they're electronic. If you're making weekend plans and are in Northeast Wisconsin or don't mind a short road trip, check out An Evening with John McGivern Friday night, April 26th at the Ashwaubenon Performing Arts Center. The host of Main Streets on PBS and former host of Around the Corner tells funny stories about his life growing up in Milwaukee in a big Irish Catholic family and his prolific show business career. Tickets can be purchased at TicketStarOnline.com. Quick fashion tip, if you appear on a podcast, don't go commando, especially if you're wearing baggy shorts. Travis Kelsey and comedian Andrew Santino recently discussed Kelsey's appearance on Santino's podcast a few years ago, where Kelsey was literally hanging out. Santino and his editor decided not to reshoot, but just put a big Kansas City Chiefs logo over Kelsey's volular area. That's a medical term. Look it up. Kelsey laughed as he recalled the incident, saying he had no idea at the time. Yeah, sure. If you're looking for something to watch this weekend and no new films or TV shows grab your attention, why not go retro? The 1979 classic Alien is opening again this weekend. The release is to celebrate the film's 45th anniversary. Alien was directed by Ridley Scott and stars Sigourney Weaver, Veronica Cartwright, Tom Skerritt, and John Hurt. If you're lucky enough to live near a theater showing Alien, you will also be treated to an interview with director Ridley Scott before the showing of the film. Kathy Lee Gifford spoke to Entertainment Tonight this week about her new book titled I Want to Matter. Your life is too short and too precious to waste. Gifford said she finally found forgiveness for her late husband Frank Gifford's affair with a flight attendant. To be clear, the affair happened before Frank passed away. 
I love the way tabloids choose their words. Kathy Lee is an accomplished host and author and creator of Kathy Lee Casuals, which do not offer menswear. So rude. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Some patchy fog, a few off and on sprinkles this morning. Gradual clearing by later this afternoon. Our high today, 66. The wind southwest at 10 to 20, gusting to 25. Tonight, partly cloudy, 45. Tomorrow, sunshine, 67. With a shower or thunderstorm possible tomorrow night. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 53. That's your WISS Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WISS.FM.